Hey guys, it's Jordan Hetrick here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started with the GoPro Hero 4. This video is for the silver and the black editions since the setup process is the same. However, once you get into using the camera, you'll notice that there's some major differences in the settings. The most notable being that the black shoots 4K at 30 frames a second, and the silver has a touch display on the back, which means you have a built-in viewfinder. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is just lift these tabs here on the side. You can tuck them into the cardboard box so they don't stick while you're pulling the camera out. And then pull the camera out of the box. Next, just pull this tab here all the way around. And the clear case on the top will come off. You can lift that off. Then turn the box around, squeeze these tabs together and you can slide the camera right out of the buckle here. You can hold on to this piece. This came as a mounting display, but it also works as an extra mount if you remove it from the box. The next thing you want to do is just to remove this little clip here. It was there for display. It says remove on it. So to do that, unscrew this thumb screw here. If it's on really tight, sometimes it comes on tight when it's mounted, you can put a Phillips head screwdriver in there and unscrew it counterclockwise. But you should be able to get it just with your thumb by unscrewing it. So unscrew that. Okay, and once you've got that unscrewed, just remove this little piece here and you can throw that away. And then you can take off this mounting buckle for now and set that down. Now we're going to remove the camera from the waterproof case that it came in. This is what protects your camera from the water and makes it waterproof when it's with this waterproof back door here. We'll get into that in a minute. But to open the waterproof housing, you just lift the tab here and unlatch this from the back ledge here. Open up the back door and grab the back of your camera and just let it slowly fall into your hand. Now grab your box that the camera came on and open the top of it here, just like that. And you can remove all the documentation that was in there. And underneath the documentation is this flap. And we're going to get the battery out. So look inside the box for the battery. And the battery looks like this. Now we're going to insert the battery and put the micro SD card in. Uh, you need to buy a micro SD card separately. That's the only thing that doesn't come in the kit that you need. And that stores your video files and your photo files. So to insert the battery, just turn your camera upside down and this little tab here, just slide it over, push down and slide it over, lift it up and insert the battery. So this little area right here lines up with the opening on the camera, push it down and you can close the door. To insert the micro SD card, just remove the door here on the side, the right side of your camera. And here's the micro SD card slot. Take the micro SD card and hold it so the text is facing you and upside down. Push it in and then with your thumbnail just click, push it until it clicks into place. And then you can put the door back on. Now let's put the camera back into the waterproof housing. So I can give you a quick tour of the buttons and the modes. Uh, this is the case that protects your camera. You can use your camera outside of the case, it's fine. But if you drop it or anything, your camera will get damaged. If you have it in the case, if, even if you scratch your housing, it's replaceable. To put your camera back in the housing, just open the back door up, grab your camera, and just slide it in. So it fits in there nice and snug. Close the back door. And then this latch here, you just want to get it right over the ledge on the back and push down on the front and it should snap into place. You can pull up just to make sure it's latched down completely. And then let's put it back on the buckle here. So you slide it in between the two slots there. And then you look and make sure the holes are lined up here and insert the thumb screw and screw it in until it's tight. I'm sure you're excited to turn on your camera and see how it works. So let's go ahead and do that. Press the front power mode button right here and that'll turn your camera on. Just press it down once. It takes a few seconds for the camera to turn on. You'll see the flashing light and also hear a beep. And now your camera will turn on straight into video mode. You can see that on the top bar there. If you look at the bottom of the screen here, you'll see a battery life status indicator. That shows that there's one bar of battery life. So there's not much battery. GoPro ships the battery with a partial charge because that's the best way to store a lithium battery. But you can use the camera right now. It doesn't have a memory life and it won't affect the battery. Right. Before you go out and video a lot or take a lot of photos, you're going to want to charge the camera and we'll get to that in just a second. 
to scroll through the different modes, you push the front button. This is the power mode button. So scroll through the modes, just push that button, and that'll go to photo mode, multi-shot, setup, and then back to video mode. This button here is the shutter select button. So when you want to start recording a video, if you're in video mode, or take photos in photo mode, you can push this button. It'll start recording video right now. And you can see that a video is recording. While the video is recording, if you have a moment that you want to be able to find when you're editing, you can push this button here. This is the settings tag button. And this will add a highlight tag to your video so that when you're editing in GoPro Studio, you can find that moment. So just push that and it'll show that a highlight is tagged. You'll see that. And to stop recording, you push the shutter select button again. If you want to change the settings in any of the modes, you can also, when you're not recording, you can press this side button, the settings tag button, and that'll open up the settings menu. Just change the options of the highlighted setting. You just push the top button, and that'll scroll through the different setting options. To move to the next option, you push the front button, and that scrolls through. And then once you've changed your settings and you want to exit out, you can press the settings tag button again, and it'll exit back into recording mode. To turn your camera off, hold down the front power mode button, and your camera will turn off. To charge the batteries and to transfer files, you can use the USB cable that came in the box. So pull that out of the box, and uh, to charge the battery, you connect it to the camera here by opening the door, and here's the USB port. So you take the small side of the USB cable and plug it into there. This goes into the USB port on your computer. And once your camera is plugged into the computer, you'll see that your camera will start charging here. You see the charging indicator. And once the camera's battery is full, that indicator will show that it's full. It'll stop filling up. Sometimes when you're charging, the light will come on instead of this indicator, depending on your computer. And when the battery's full, that light will turn off. There are a couple ways to transfer your files to your computer. One is to have your camera connected to your computer with a USB cable and look on your computer under devices for the disk. It's usually called no name. And then you can drag the files over to your computer. If for some reason you can't find your camera when it's plugged in with the USB cable, you can also remove the micro SD card and put it in the adapter that came with the micro SD card if you have an SD card slot on your computer. And then it'll show up as an external disk. After your camera is finished charging, you just want to make sure that your camera is running the latest firmware from GoPro. Any updates will just add more features to your camera, better settings, or fix any issues there were with previous releases. To check which firmware your camera is running, you can just push the mode button and turn your camera on. And on the very first screen at the bottom, you'll see which version it's running. If you can write that down quickly when it flashes, then you can check on GoPro's website and make sure it matches the latest firmware. If you need to update the firmware, you can follow the on-screen instructions at gopro.com support under product updates. You can also update your camera wirelessly through the GoPro app. So if you connect your camera using the GoPro app, which is downloadable for your smartphone or tablet, you can wirelessly update your camera's firmware. These are the back doors that fit on the back of the waterproof housing that came with your camera. If you got the Hero 4 Black, it came with these two back doors. This is the skeleton back door, and this is the waterproof back door. And if you got the Hero 4 Silver, it also came with this, which is the touch back door. I'll start with the waterproof back door. This is the standard waterproof back door. It's solid all the way through. And this is the back door to use if you're going in the water or in extreme conditions where your camera could get dirty or wet. And when used with the standard waterproof housing, this creates a completely waterproof case that's waterproof up to 131 feet or 40 meters deep. The only drawback about this back door is that it, because the case is completely closed, the audio can be muffled sometimes. This is the skeleton back door. This back door is open in the middle here, which allows for better audio recording, but it's not waterproof. So don't use this back door if you're going in the water or in conditions where your camera could get dirty or dusty. If you have the Hero 4 Silver, it also came with this touch back door. And this allows for the touch functions to work. It is waterproof up to 10 feet, although the touch functions don't work underwater. So if you're going deeper or in more extreme conditions, it's better to use the waterproof back door. 
but this one is nice because it allows the touch functions to work on your touch display screen. If you're using your camera in the water, I strongly suggest getting a floaty backdoor too because GoPro cameras don't float. So this will make your camera float if you're in the water. It just attaches to the back of the waterproof backdoor here. On all of the back doors, you have this white rubber seal here. This is what creates the seal when you close it with the waterproof housing. So you want to make sure to keep that really clean and free of dirt or dust. And this here is the bar that connects your camera's back door to the housing. Changing out the back doors is relatively easy. You just open up the camera housing by lifting the latch here and folding the back door out. And if it runs into the buckle here, just loosen the thumb screw and rotate that down so you have a little more room to pull it out. And then you just kind of wiggle it out of place. It'll come out of this little clasp here. To insert the new back door, just make sure that the white gasket here is going to meet up with the inside of the housing. That's what creates the seal. And then you kind of just wiggle it into place till it clicks. And then once it's in there, you can just close the back door, redo the buckle, and you've got a new back door on. If you bought the standard edition, these are the rest of the pieces that came with your camera kit. These are the mounting pieces, and this is the curved adhesive mount. This is the flat adhesive mount. This is the J-hook buckle. This is the horizontal surface quick release buckle, the white locking plug, and this is the three-way pivot arm. To adhere the adhesive mounts, you just remove this red liner here, and there's a super tacky surface underneath. Stick it onto a clean, smooth surface. Like this wouldn't be that good because it's actually a little porous. Smooth, clean surface and press it down really hard just to kind of get that adhesive to stick. And then let it sit for about 24 hours before you use it. And after 72 hours, it's fully cured. But once they're on and they're on properly, they won't come off on most surfaces. You also don't want to use them on flexible surfaces like a snowboard will most likely come off. The adhesive mounts here work in conjunction with the buckles. So to mount your camera into one of the adhesive mounts, first you insert it into one of the buckles by inserting it between the slots here. And you line up the holes and then you tighten it on with the long thumb screw. The long thumb screw always goes directly beneath your camera, whereas the short thumb screws, if you use one of those, it'll bump into the camera when you're trying to tighten it. So you just tighten it on there and you adjust your angle and you slide it into one of these buckles by taking the two ends here and just sliding it right in. And you'll hear it snap into place when it gets all the way inserted, like just like that, and then your camera is secure. You can also use this white locking plug when you're using the horizontal surface buckle, and that just slides onto the thumb screw here before you screw it in, and it goes right down into this spot. That just makes sure that your camera will not get knocked out of place and it also reduces any vibration if it's kind of loose in there. And of course you want to put the long thumb screw through this hole before you attach it to the buckle just so this doesn't get lost when you're using it. If you need to get a greater range of motion you can use this J-hook buckle here and that actually allows you to mount it so it can rotate upside down completely so if it's on a vertical surface your camera could be flush with the surface. And the three-way pivot arm can be used to rotate your camera at different angles can also be used to change the orientation. If it's facing one way, you can use it to change it to, so it's facing the opposite 90 degrees. To insert your camera onto the three-way pivot arm, just take the short thumb screw out of the top of the three-way pivot arm and use that to attach it to the buckle down here. Then you can attach your camera up here with the long thumb screw to the three-way pivot arm. If you need more help on how to use your camera, check out my books on Amazon.com or you can click the link below. Thanks for watching and enjoy making some fun videos.